Hello everyone, this is Harley from Garden FL, and welcome to episode 6 of this Tropical Fruit Gardening Series. So, in today's episode, we are going to be reviewing a lot of things that we are going to be moving to the farm. So, let me show you. So, right here, I actually repotted a bunch of cherimoyas and atemoyas. As you can see, this is the, um, actually, this is a cherimoya right here. And it's so baby, um, and you know, they're all pretty baby, but they're all pretty healthy. And as you see, these in the middle are actually Ignavera ice cream beans. Now, I got these from John Painter and uh, his, his team. When I went with the Hart Brothers, we collected a bunch of them. And uh, the Hart Brothers actually gave me so much to, uh, to actually plant out and grow. So I actually have so many that actually need to be uh, repotted. So, oh my God, look at these ice cream beans, guys. These are gonna grow so big and healthy. As you could tell, the sugar apples are almost harvestable. As you guys know, I harvested one the other day. If you follow me on Instagram, I made a pretty big post about that. But we can't even get this one out, guys. It's so fat. <laughs> there you go. Wow, look at that. It's beautiful. It almost looks like a heart. Um, now, I've noticed that a lot of these sugar apples that I see at, um, you know, the stores, not the stores, uh, for example, I went to Fruitscapes today and I bought a few sugar apples from them, but they were very kind of, you could just tell they were pollinated by uh, nature, you know, and nothing against that, but I just always love a, a round sugar apple, you know, where the things, the seeds and the meat are just a good ratio, you know, you always, everyone can always appreciate, you know, a nice fruit um, that's just a beautiful fruit, really, the squamosa, and then the squamosa. So this is an update on the Kent mangoes I have. I actually haven't even harvested one. Um, actually, you know what? One fell off and I ate it, but it wasn't too ripe. So, uh, yeah, well, my tree is pretty young, as you can tell. You know, it's not even that big, guys. Like, I would say it's just over six feet. So I'm six one. So this is probably like maybe seven feet, honestly. But papaya actually is coming on along very well and I want to show you guys something right here so right here I actually have so many mangoes and I've been actually repotting some of these I have to do it more uh, this is all just of compost so I have some mangoes over here as you can tell I picked some up and I was putting them in so I got to start doing that because you see some didn't transfer too well uh, because as you know the farm we're definitely gonna need a lot of uh, rootstock for mangoes in the future and uh, absolutely we're gonna need rootstock for everything. So something I wanted to share with you guys, this is my red alama. Now, um, I got this from Fruitscapes and it is just doing a really good job at growing. But I took out the actual, this, the support. Oh, there's a lizard there. I took out the support and the tree itself was just very wobbly and kind of when the wind blew, it was kind of scary the whole tree was turning um, um, now when i found out that the rootstock it's in is actually uh, pond, pond apple rootstock it's susceptible to flooding i mean it can handle flooding is what i mean so this is the, it's pretty big too guys this is like almost 10 feet it towers me so yeah so these are some of the fruit i got today at fruitscapes and not just fruit skates, but at John Painters, as well as, uh, where else did I go? Stanley Mangoes. And as you see, I got some sugar apples. These are, you know, these are good sugar apples. The only thing about these is these obviously were uh, naturally pollinated. So as you could tell, the shape isn't the best, but of course, you know, you still get the sugar apple. Sometimes I like these naturally pollinated uh, sugar apples because they just have all sorts of cool sizes. But for eating purposes, I like the naturally, not naturally, the hand pollinated ones because you just get the more round uh, fruit. But as well with all these good mango varieties, it doesn't end there. I got, obviously got more, and uh, I got more inside, but for, to show you guys, I just wanted to display them like this. French L is very good. I really like lemon zest. I like all of them, but uh, I love French L a lot for this one. And of course, these sugar apples. They're not ready yet, but you know, they're delicious. All right, everyone. So we're gonna be enjoying this lemon zest mango. Now, I really like lemon zest. It's one of my favorite varieties. Um, right here, I have some of my other fruit, but 
Um, the reason why I love lemon zest is because it kind of still tastes like the orange sherbet. I, I still taste like an orange sherbet vibe, but um, it just the color itself is really good looking inside. And we're just gonna cut this open. Now I got, actually I got this one at John Painters in Pine Island, if you guys haven't been there. And when he has fruit, oof. <laughs> wow. You just taste like such a citrusy vibe. Mm. Nothing compares to a mango like this. So good. Very good. It's like sweet, you get lemony, you get that you get that citrus taste. Mm. The texture is actually very like gummy. It kind of tastes like orange. <laughs> so crazy. I really think it's cool how they have really selected certain flavors of other fruit and it really like you can taste them when you when you eat the, the mango you know and I was I grew up eating just regular like mangoes off trees and you don't really know the variety and you just kind of knew that that classic mango taste and you know I've never really been exposed to like the whole just a whole flavor table of mangoes like when you hear a mango name and you think like lemon zest or orange sherbet i was surprised that they actually taste like what the, the name is um, mm, delicious they say mango season is almost over but mm, not up on island mango season is still going mm -hmm. Hola, Lulu. Lulu. This is a jackfruit tree I have. I actually planted this jackfruit, oh, I'd say like six months ago, and it completely lost its foliage when I planted it because it just it suffered from um, what's it called? Circular root. Where root, it was very root bound. So I'm happy that it's grown all this beautiful foliage. Now I want to show you guys over here. This was the first sugar apple tree I actually planted on this property. And as you see, the sugar apples have actually grown very nice. This one back here is probably the biggest on this tree. As you see, all of them are very, very beautiful and they're pollinated all uniformly and round. Uh, this tree actually has the most sugar apples because it's the bigger one. And it also gets very good morning sun throughout the day. Oh, look at that rainbow. It's so beautiful. You guys see the rainbow over there. It gets all this good morning sun. As you see the jackfruit. Here I have a Rolinia, but it, I had to trim it back because it suffered severely from the flood. Um, beautiful flower I have right here. But actually over here, we have the Maha which actually I'm tipping right now. I'm tipping, I've been tipping this, so it might not look good. But as you see right there, let's see if we can show you guys. So as you see right there, it's actually about to pop out with new, uh, with new shoots. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would know that this is the sugar apple tree that I purchased alongside with the first one I bought, this one. These are kind of huge. Like, let's look at the height. It's about eight feet tall. This one will be going to the farm and as well as all these sugar apples that you see in the pot right here, all of this will be going to the farm to plant. And some of these even have the sugar apple on them. But, you know, we're gonna leave it for harvesting purposes. But honestly, I didn't, I didn't find any of these. Wow, we have a terrible ant problem right here on this sugar apple. As you could see, all the ants are scurrying everywhere. So this means that um, there's probably a lot of, look at this bag, it's just filled with ants. Yay! <laughs> We're gonna put that down there. Anyways, let's look why they're here, guys. So as you can see, the ants are farming aphids. Now the aphids, 
the aphids are these little white things that you see on the sugar apple. Now what they'll do is they'll just uh, put these guys here and they'll suck basically the juices out of your fruit and they'll feed it to the, the ants. And the ants love that. Um, so we're just gonna, yeah, like I did, just remove it. I'm gonna put that bag back, I guess, but I'm gonna make sure the ants are removed from it before we put it back. So apparently I had a bunch of mislabeled green sugar apple trees and some of them were purple. Some of these over here are still green, which is no problem because, you know, I've had some people say that, oh, purple variety is inferior to green variety, squamosa, blah, blah, blah. You know, people will say that, but in reality, sugar apple, if you just grow it uh, with good soil, good care, you know, you give it water, it's gonna be a good sugar apple, regardless of the color. Of course, there might be some differences that you may taste, but to me, honestly, I've had a lot of anunas and sugar apples, um, and they're all pretty good. Let me show you guys this one that we come across. This will probably will be the second one I harvest here within a few days. It's starting actually to feel a bit soft already. And it's so round, guys. That's why I love hand pollinating the sugar apples because you can just tell how round this one is. Like it looks like a pokeball. Like from the top, look at just the circumference. Perfect ball, you know, it's just, it is not like the, it's, you can tell it's not naturally pollinated just because how perfect. And nothing wrong with naturally pollinated sugar apples. In fact, in the future, I plan the, all these to be naturally pollinated, but it's always nice to have a few selected specialty trees, which I recommend everyone have in their garden. You know, well, really all my trees are my special, specialty trees, but there's just gonna be some on my future farm that I won't be able to pollinate all of them. So, and it's always good to promote natural pollinators regardless, especially if I plan to do mostly nonas. I'm gonna want uh, the pollinators. As you see, this is another sugar apple. That has the, um, the mealy bugs or aphids. I guess we can remove them. I don't know guys, I, I buy sugar apples with those on and someone told me that, uh, someone told me that some of those are good and uh, I really don't know what to believe. So for now, we're just gonna remove them. And uh, as you see here, we have sour sop. This is, okay guys, this I think is a, at the mod, yeah, I bought it at the mod, yeah, at a flea market, but I don't know, it might be custard apple. Same thing with that at the mod, yeah. That is at the mod, tree right there, but we don't know. I've been having trouble pollinating. But right over here, if you got to come along with me, you could tell that these are another sugar apple. Just another example of a sugar apple that, oh my God, ants are everywhere. Okay, obviously I need to, hose these down more because look at this this is kind of a bad aphid problem not too bad but you know when we see those ants just popping out obviously they're they're up to something they're up to no good look at this guys oh my god i've now i hand pollinated these oh my god there's so much ants. i'm kind of concerned i have to you know i haven't taken these bags out in a while so i guess that's what happens the consequence of leaving them on so much is the ants figure out how to get in and they kind of make their home because they're like, oh, no one's removing these bags. Let's just chill here. Um, but hey guys, we need to move because I want you on my sugar apple. It's beautiful, right? Now actually this one right here, I actually plan to remove and I just forgot to remove it. And then it started getting bigger. So it's like, you know what? And I thought it was gonna fall off naturally but it kind of got a good size. So I said, you know what, let's protect it now. So four sugar apples to this beautiful tree. And the thing I love about this tree, guys, is number one is the foliage. It kind of looks very bushy. And number two is in a pot. This is about a 20 gallon pot, I think. And it's just thriving, you know, giving me good sugar apple. This is concerning, this black, this blackness right here could very well be from the tightness of the organza bag. You know, as they tighten, maybe it was too tight when it was younger. 
and it maybe caused that blackness work it because of sunburn but the other ones I'm observing I don't see that so it might, it might be a, either a sunburn thing or, or it could be because of the tightness of these organza bags now something that I've been watching very closely are these noni fruits that are forming uh, now I have actually never had noni before but it is a super food and super fruit I should say and as you see, those are ants pollinating the noni fruit. Now, dude, I see, dude, everyone, I see um, ants on all these nonis, as well as other pollinators, such as the butterfly zebra, which is a great um, butterfly you want in your yard, in your garden. So I think the noni flower and the noni plant really is just a great a fruit to have in your yard. I heard the fruit tastes terrible, but we haven't even tasted it ourselves so we can't really say that all right over here i just want to show you guys these figs these are brown turkey figs but as you could tell even right up here they're forming beautiful little baby figs and these obviously get much bigger than what they are now these have kind of been on the slow side uh the figs mainly because i think i have to just prune them they need a good pruning and it's kind of been a drought lately, guys, over here in Florida, at least in Bradenton. We got rain these past few days, which is great, but in the past, it's kind of been slow. Now we have another fig tree over here. I like figs, but I don't like how they're kind of hard in Florida because they're susceptible to the, um, to the, the nematodes. So this is one that's almost ready. To right and it should be ready within a few weeks. It will turn a brown color. 